We've got some breaking news that we've just learned. We found out yes. that the president will no longer be attending the Summit of the Americas in Peru. That's where he was going to be meeting with uh, South and Central American uh, countries. I believe a lot of these countries have been the ones that he's criticized over immigration. Uh, what are you hearing? Well, Sarah Sanders, the press secretary, just released a statement saying the president will not travel to Lima, Peru, for the Summit of the Americas, a traditional stopping point for American presidents. It would have been the president's first interaction outside of the United States in South America, Lima, Peru, with many of these heads of state to discuss regional issues, immigration among them. He's also not traveling, as he had previously been announced, to Bogota, Colombia, on his way back to the United States for meeting with leaders there. So he's scrapping the entire South American trip entirely, which has been in place for weeks on the calendar. I was meeting with diplomats last week, anticipating the Summit of the Americas, looking very much forward to the president's arrival, thinking there might possibly be an announcement of a at least initial renegotiation of the North American Free Trade Agreement. But those talks have stalled. Sarah Sanders, the press secretary here, said in her statement that the president will remain in Washington to oversee the U.S. response to activities going on in Syria and other matters around the world, significantly signaling that something is going to be done by the United States military in Syria, and the president wanted to be here in the United States to watch over it, set it in motion quite probably, and then talk about it with the rest of the country. So the trip to Lima, Peru and Bogota, Colombia scrapped. Probably not going to be rescheduled because they only hold the Summit of the Americas once a year. So the president's staying in Washington, and that's what we know right now. Major, uh, before we skip back to Jeff, I just want to ask you with regards to that uh, possible response from the president of the United States uh, with regards to Syria, uh, it seems as if both uh, parties agree that something needs to be done. Uh, the, our allies believe something needs to be done. The question is, military action without a coherent strategy is probably not a recipe for success. What are you hearing about the possible strategy going forward? Because it appears that the president threw some of his administration off guard when he suggested a few days ago uh, that the United States should pull out of Syria. Now we're talking about uh, further military action. Well, Sarah Sanders, the sec press secretary, said from the podium yesterday, these are different issues, and you can respond to one, an alleged chemical attack, and not necessarily suggest you're going to remain in Syria on an open-ended time frame to deal with ISIS. This administration does consider the two separate, and it is considering, and the president has made fundamentally clear that he is considering a military response to this latest alleged chlorine gas attack in Syria. And so that might be very much like it was in April a year ago. A one-time event, it was 59 Tomahawk cruise missiles then, at a particular target to send a particular message. Then there's this separate ongoing deliberations within the administration about how long to keep the roughly 2,000 U.S. forces in Syria there to carry out and complete the, 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 the battle rather against ISIS. So the administration does consider these two different things and two different strategic sets of questions, but there is an ongoing debate in the administration. State Department and the Pentagon want to keep our forces there longer. The president is itching to get them out, and there is an ongoing conversation about that.